Welcome back to Auntie Tay's YouTube channel and happy holidays y'all. With the holidays upon us, I love matching family pictures. And what better way than sublimating our own accessories so the whole family can match. So specifically today, we are going to be sublimating bow ties, suspenders, and dog bandanas. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. So let's get creating. Hey everyone, it's Sam from the Anti Tay team and you're watching The Sam Show. Let's go make some fun things. We are gonna start off with making our own dog bandana and I wanna show you the difference in the fabrics. On the right is my Amazon 100% polyester tablecloth that I use. I don't like using this, it's way too thin and it wrinkles really easily. On the left is what I recommend. It is from Fabric Wholesale Direct. It's called Poplin. It's also 100% polyester. You can also get different colors, which is fun, but this is white and you can see it's so much whiter than the Amazon tablecloth. And so thank you to April from Tissot Sweet who recommended using this. It's a lot thicker, a lot easier to use. And this is what I recommend to use to make your dog bandana. So I am going to cut my dog bandana out on my Cricut. And in order to do that, I am going to cut it in a strip that is just under 12 inches long. I don't like doing the full 12 inches. If you've seen my other videos on how to cut fabric with your Cricut, especially with poplin, you get a lot of frayed edges with fabric and I like to be just short of 12 inches with my fabric so those frayed edges aren't getting stuck in my Cricut's wheels. And I'm just trimming off this edge. So I have a general idea of where the bandana is going to go. So I need to get my printed sublimation paper and see how many pages of that I'm going to need for each side of the bandana. Um, so once I have my sheets, I'm trimming them and then I'm just going to tape them together from the back. I found this is the best way to have like a seamless look to them. So I tape them together. And then on the opposite side of the bandana, I wanted to do a different pattern. So I printed off and trimmed this other pattern for the other side of the dog bandana because why not make it reversible? So I am just trying to use the paper the best I can for the bandana shape without wasting too much of it. And just like I did with the other sheet, I lined everything up and taped it from the back. Like I said, this is just from trial and error what I have learned to be the best seamless, flawless sublimation transfer when you're trying to sublimate a piece of fabric like this. And then I am going to just make sure it's really secure with tape and trim off any extra. Like I know the bandana is not gonna be wider than 12 inches. And then I'm gonna go over to my heat press where it's already nice and hot and tape it down to the fabric. If your fabric is wrinkly, make sure you press any of the wrinkles out first and I'm blocking the camera, but you're gonna do what you normally do when you sublimate fabric. I heat it up to about 360 to 375 degrees, somewhere around there, and I'm gonna press it for about 50 seconds. And when it's all done, be careful, it's going to be very hot, but then you have your fabric. Using the pink fabric mat and because the bandana I'm making is extra large you are going to need the longer mat just make sure you line it up um, the way you want it be sure that you know which way the bandana is going to cut as you can see from my mat I have cut hundreds of bandanas using these mats so it's pretty easy to line up where it's going to cut for me um, in which way 
to load it into my Cricut, but just make sure that you know which way it's going to go. The fabric is really touchy and you don't want to have any wrinkles in it and you don't want it overhanging from the edge too much because that will cause problems in your Cricut. And you can see I'm just taking my rotary blade and trimming off all those little frayed edges that will cause issues. This stuff frays really easily. Uh, most polyester does. And I did a test cut using a star shaped. That's the way I always like to test my cuts um, because I've never cut this fabric before. But what I did was I changed out my fine point blade for my rotary tool. So sorry if you don't have a maker, you're going to have to cut the bandana out by hand, but it's not that complicated. And I cut it on flannel on the more setting. You are definitely going to want to check to make sure yours cuts through because there's nothing worse than it not cutting through. And I loaded my mat into my Cricut and it's going to cut out the bandana. It cuts out so quickly and so nice. This is why I love my maker and I use it for cutting out dog bandanas. It's just, it's super easy, but if you want to cut it out by hand, you can totally do that too. With both pieces right side together, you're going to pin along the top of the bandana and with about a quarter inch seam allowance, you are just going to sew the two pieces together. And I'm just using a straight stitch and making sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of my sewing. Then we are going to press, I did this off camera, but about a half an inch, a quarter to a half an inch on each of the ends. This is where the collar is going to go through, so just make sure that the opening is going to be wide enough for your dog collar to slide through. And we're just going to sew those down as well. And then we are going to put right sides back together and pin the pattern to itself and we're going to then sew along the pointed area. Just make sure that you don't sew together the opening for the collar. I trimmed the ends and then I'm going to turn the right side out. And on the outside, I'm going to do a top stitch. I like to do this along the outside edge and then along the top because it helps feed the collar through the opening. And for the top stitch, I just get it as close to the edge as possible. It really just keeps the pieces together and it makes it look really professional this way. And there you have it. There's your reversible sublimated dog bandana. Now we are going to move on to the suspenders and bow ties. I got these off of Amazon and these are children's sizes, but you could totally do this for any man in your life or if you want to do them for yourself, you know, whoever. Um, originally, I took apart the elastic on these and then sewed them back together once I sublimated them, but you do not have to do this. I actually did another set without taking it apart and it works just as good. So you totally don't have to take it apart if you don't want to. And I measured the straps and they are about an inch wide. So then I cut all of my sublimation paper into an inch wide strip. And with this, it was just easier to cut the little excess trees off because I'm going to be lining them up from top to bottom. So I just cut the little extra trunks and little tree tops off. And then all I did was heat tape around the suspender. The elastic is polyester. I don't remember the percentage, but it's higher polyester. And it was really easy. You just cut it out to where it needs to go and tape it really good. Tape is your best friend in this situation. I put down some parchment paper to protect my heating surface and then I just 
used my easy press i thought it would be a lot easier to use my easy press than try to figure this out on my heat press and as you can see i had it set to 400 degrees and i let it go for about 40 seconds and it turned out awesome i could not have asked for a better outcome it's so cute and as long as you aren't shifting things around you shouldn't really get any ghosting just be really mindful and use a lot of tape and I just took everything off with a pair of scissors very carefully. And now I'm going to show you how I did it with keeping the class still on. All you want to do is shimmy it as far down as it can possibly go. There will be a little bit left that you can't sublimate, but most of the time you are going to not see that anyways it'll be on the back side of it so i totally recommend this way instead of taking it apart because i did end up sewing the clasps back on to the other one so i just wanted to show you this one real quick so you get an idea of how to do it without taking the clasps off originally i was going to do the anti tay perfect bow and just do a smaller version for these bow ties but a little birdie in my ear just told me, like, just try sublimating on these and see if they work. So all I did was take off the stitches of the bow tie and there were three layers of fabric sewn together. And I ironed it out and sublimated on the bow tie. And sure enough, it turned out perfectly. So I also made sure to take the little bow tie piece and sublimate on that as well. And then I just took a rubber band to hold it back in place. And then I hot glued it back. So it was kind of like doing the anti tape perfect bow, but you didn't have to actually make the bow. The bow already came complete. So it was so awesome. Be careful not to get the hot glue right on the rubber band because it will melt it. But I just hot glued it back onto the actual part that goes around your neck. And it turned out so cute and so simple. And here everything is together. You have your suspenders, your bow ties. I think they look so cute. I mean, shoot, you could put bow ties on dogs. You can put bandanas on kids. The options are endless and I absolutely love this pattern. It's one of the Ivy's colorful Christmas patterns. You can also get it in pattern HTV and pattern vinyl. It's perfect for the Christmas time and I am just obsessed. Here's the bandana. All you do is you put a collar through the top part and put it around your dog, your kid, whoever you want. I love the fact that it's reversible. I love it. You could add HTV with a name or a fun little saying, you know, Merry Christmas, but I'm obsessed. I hope you guys love it. See you next time. Thanks for joining.